Hello viewers and welcome to my Australia blog then for the Formula 1 2013 season. It's come around again really quickly. Not like the old days when we had months and months of a break, plus we never saw any testing. Uh, it was always a, a very different time, whereas now we have almost constant F1 coverage throughout the winter. But what's been unclear throughout the testing really is who's been in dominant form. And in a way, uh, Australia this weekend's been kind of a strange race because we still haven't learned a great deal more. But let's just go through some of the race. So Hulkenberg out. There's something for conspiracy theorists. Had a had a fuel problem of some course, fuel injection problem of, of some kind that was found an hour before the race, but they couldn't fix it. And that was really strange. I really thought they'd have tried to have fixed it and put him at the back of the grid and started from the pits. It's interesting that it's something that they simply couldn't fix but didn't have a problem on the other car. As for the start of the race, so it was a great start. Obviously Vettel gets off the line well. Appalling start from Mark Webber. Surprise, surprise. Um, Ferraris, they get off the line really well. Some great reaction from Fernando Alonso, actually, nearly crashing into the back of Lewis Hamilton. Just, just some quick reactions there. I always like to see that. And so they all managed to get through turn one cleanly. Uh, they showed some action uh, from different points of view. Obviously, Webber being overtaken by a whole bunch of cars. Perez getting really close to a couple of cars and working his way through. They all got through turn one cleanly. It's very unusual at Australia. There's often a number of problems there, but well done to everybody. Button was the first to pit today. McLaren, continual woes, even from the qualifying from them. That car is nowhere at the moment. And it's a really strange one because people are talking about you know, rumours, should I say, of, of, of the, the uh, uh, last year's car being brought back. I've not heard a rumour like that with a team for a long, long time. It's very unusual to even consider bringing back an old car. And you think, what could possibly be wrong with this car, with the resources of McLaren that they have available? You know, what could possibly be so bad that they can't fix it? And now we're talking about the ride and the, the bumpy ride of the car and everything else. It's very unstable through corners, so... It's hard for the drivers to get the most out of it and protect their tyres. And of course, tyre wear, as we know, is, is more critical than ever. Um, so if we're moving along, he gets onto the medium tyres. And of course, then Weber follows and you have a mid-pack battle where the first few pull away. Obviously, Kimi Raikkonen gets past Lewis Hamilton and uh, the f first four cars pull away on the race. And after that, it was a pretty sort of slow, sedate section there. We're, we're just waiting for the tyres to run down. And then eventually, obviously, the, the, the front few cars pit and the Mercedes stay out there. Of course, then Rosberg, his car pulls out, which is a shame for him, uh, having the technical woes at Mercedes today. While, of course, then the other cars work their way past Hamilton again and Hamilton eventually having to switch to a three-stop strategy. But the, generally speaking, there wasn't a great deal of action in the field. There wasn't any major action in terms of crashes or overtakes and stuff like that. There was a few interesting moments. You'll have seen Kimi getting past uh, Lewis Hamilton. You'll have seen, obviously, Alonso getting past Lewis Hamilton. Lewis was the one who was tough to overtake today. He just didn't quite have the speed and wasn't able to maintain those tyres. It'll be interesting to see how much of that is down to track temperature. In terms of outright pace, I think the Red Bull we were expecting to dominate they haven't uh, and that's very much I, I think again down to the 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 temperature the low temperatures which were affecting their tires the lotus i think is the one that shocked everybody extraordinarily good in their tires uh, great on long runs and with a lot of pace as well it seems like Kimi wasn't even using all the pace he had available to him when he set that fastest lap at the end there so that's something to really put everybody on the on their toes and I think especially Ferrari I think Alonso really noticed that today wow Kimi had a lot in the tank so of course uh, th that was it. There was kind of a field spread and there wasn't really much more action in the second half of the race and it was just following who was going to fall off on their tyres. Adrian Sutil put in a good job. Uh, Massa got a bit let down in his pit stop. Uh, but ultimately in the end then, we had three guys on the podium I think were quite predictable. From a personal point of view, I, I saw Vettel and, and Alonso on the podium. I didn't really know who was going to be on the final step. I think the surprise of the day is how poor... McLaren have been. Uh, I've not seen McLaren doing so poorly in Melbourne for a very, very long time and they, they really need to turn that around. Of course we have Malaysia next week so it's all to play for again. Now talking to uh, Boulier afterwards uh, on the BBC and he was very confident uh, about the Lotus and its potential performance at Malaysia next week. So we could end up with a very similar podium at Malaysia, but it all depends on the rain. And as we know, when the rain comes, it comes and it's, a, it's an absolute deluge. 
Looking at some of the other drivers, Williams were disappointing. They clearly have some head scratching to do after last year, which was a solid car last year, very poor this year. Uh, the Toro Rosso put in some good laps now and again, but uh, obviously not quite there up with the leaders, and some of that could have been down to the changeable conditions. Roman Grosjean, again, I think he was just wanting to finish the race. His pace wasn't great today. He got a bit boxed in behind Jensen Button and just got to the end. Paul DeResta was a little bit wound up that he wasn't able to overtake and was told to stay behind Adrian Sutil. At the end of the day, I don't think it's... I think it's a shame, but, you know, at the same time, the team wanted those points. I think it's good to get points on the board. Sergio Perez, obviously, out of the points in 11th, but with the car handling as it is, I think that's quite a solid result for him today. As for the back runners, well, Marisha looked to be quite strong, a little bit stronger than the Caterhams at the moment. Uh, Jules Bianchi, lots of people talking about him. Star of the future, perhaps. Certainly, he's put in some very good lap times. Uh, as I understand it, one of his best his best lap was just 45 hundredths slower than Sebastian Vettel's best lap, which is uh, very impressive. Uh, as, you know, in in by any regard, uh, on any lap of that race, it has to be said. So that was a quick roundup of the Australian Grand Prix. It was a Grand Prix where we didn't really learn too much about all the cars the the weather conditions and the tires were getting in the way of the outright performance i think we're going to see uh, a more managed qualifying session and a more managed race next time i think in terms of speed obviously red bull very quick uh, ferrari very quick and lotus uh, unknown in terms of whether they're going to be flexible for every track this year but certainly in the conditions today it's fantastic mercedes again looks like they have good qualifying pace uh, but it's unknown over the long runs how their tyres are actually going to perform. Um, behind them, of course, Force India and McLaren. It's going to be quite a midfield battle in the short term. But that's it from me for now from my Australia blog. And as ever, more soon.